What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. In the previous video, we did a bunch of side questing in Hyrule Town, and well, in this video, we're going to continue side questing here in Caster Wilds. So first things first, let's grab our moments and dig into the side of this cliff. Now, one thing I do want to correct about the previous video, I made a mistake about the Goron side quest. You know, the one where we have to fuse kinstones with mysterious walls all over Hyrule to make more Gorons appear? Yeah, I kind of thought we were done with that quest. Turns out, we're not. There's at least two more mysterious walls that we need to find and fuse with. Possibly more. But I'm not really too sure anymore, so I kind of need to do a little more research on the rest of that quest. But no worries, I'll figure it out in a few episodes. That being said, also in the previous video, we caused like three lily pads to spawn here in Caster Wilds by fusing with one of the NPCs back in Hyrule Town. I guess technically none of these are really required, but um... They only take a few seconds, and you can get some pretty cool items, so I figured, why not? In chest number one, we can get ourselves a blue kinstone piece. And pretty much, yeah, that's all we're really going to be collecting, is just some rare kinstones. But that's not a bad thing, because I think the rest of them are going to be red kinstones. And I know in this video, we're going to do at least one fusion that requires a red kinstone. So who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. And uh, the kinstone that we're going to pick up is one that we actually need. Inside chest number two is, yes, a red kinstone piece, as I predicted. Alright, I did not want to go back in here, dude, I swear. Like, the hitboxes when you're Minish Link are just so jacked up. And, dude, I really need you to move right now. Come on, buddy. There you go. Thank you. Uh, could you imagine if, like, that guy just did not decide to move? We would have been stuck there forever waiting for him. Alright, so no, we just missed the last lily pad. Dang it. Thank goodness this one comes back pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, the final hole we want to fall into is right up here. So, dude, I swear I did not mean to run into those thorns. But, yes, we got ourselves another red kinstone piece. Now... That is not the final secret here in Caster Wilds. There is one more that we can collect while we're in our Minish form. So, for this one, we gotta travel all the way to the bottom right side of the screen. It's pretty far, especially as a little Minish boy. Although, I think we actually might be able to make use of one of the shortcuts that we made. Um, not too sure. We might get blocked by, like, one of those weird bushes. Um... Ah, crap, there is one there. Dang it, that stinks. Well, I guess we'll have to go the long way around then. Oh, well, that's what I get for trying to save some time. Although, wait a minute. Actually, maybe this wasn't the long way around because, yeah, the Minish Tunnel is right there. So, the shortcut actually would have taken us longer had it actually worked. Whatever, though. Go all the way to the left first because, yes, this will take you to a chest that contains a red kinstone piece. Then... You want to go forth from the left, and, um, this will let you go deeper into the tunnel. And as we go farther inside, we'll find a gauntlet of enemies and some block puzzles. Oh, no! But eventually, these will lead us to a piece of heart. It's kind of crazy, like, how many pieces of heart that we've been picking up recently. I mean, the game does have a bunch of them. Like, that's primarily how you get heart containers in this game, since... Minish Cap has only six dungeons, including the last one. And, um, of those six dungeons, five of them obviously will give you a heart container. There is a sixth full heart container that I think you get through other means. So, yeah, that leaves the remaining 11 hearts that you would need all from pieces of heart. So, yeah. That's why a lot of them, I think, are really, really easy to find. But, um, there we go. Three more, and we can complete another heart container, which I think we should be able to do before the end of this video. Like, I know where, um, at least three heart pieces are. It's just a matter of us being able to get to them. All right, now that we're done, uh, sadly, yeah, we gotta go all the way back to where the freaking stump was. That way we can return to our human form. And, uh, go do side quests elsewhere, because we're pretty much done in the Caster Wild section. But, 
That's not to say we're done with this part of Hyrule. I actually want to make my way back to the Wind Ruins because there's a couple of things we can do as a Minish back there real quick. So, let's just ride this lily pad back across and- Hello? Wait a minute, what? Um, game. I was totally on solid ground there. I don't know what you're trying to pull, but whatever, dude. I guess I'll take your word for it. And yeah, this is going to seem kind of stupid, guys, but we're going to call our boy Zepha and uh, teleport right back to Caster Wilds. And the only reason I'm doing this is because the teleportation spot is fairly close to the southern exit that leads to the Wind Ruins, and it just saves you a little bit of time of walking back there. Alright, so real quick, um, let's do this because I have no idea why, like, I didn't do this on my first run through, but, uh, yeah, we can bomb this wall, and inside we should find a pretty cool treasure. So, let's see, we got a blue kinstone piece, not bad, not bad at all. Probably should have done that on, like, my first run through this area, but I kind of was rushing just to get to the temple, so, yeah. And it's not even really required, so I guess skipping that, not the worst thing in the world. Alright, let's shrink down to the size of a Minish, and this is something that you couldn't do until after you had completed the temple, but we can drop down here into this little guy's house, pick up this red kinstone piece, and I'm pretty sure he wants to fuse with us now, so let's do it. And he does want a red piece that we do have several of, so that's good for us. And I believe this is going to spawn another beanstalk pretty close by. I don't think this one gives us a piece of harp, but... It does give us an upgrade to one of our items, and it's totally worth picking up. So, yeah, let's do it, baby. I'm excited. Let's go find that beanstalk and uh, get that upgrade. Hopefully, yeah, I did make the shortcut, so we're good. And I think that's the only one that we need to make use of. So, yeah, I think we're ready to go right up that beanstalk and get our reward. Oh, man, I'm excited. What's it gonna be, guys? I mean... I already know what it is, so the excitement for me is kind of just like fake enthusiasm. But I'm playing it up for you guys. What's it gonna be? Let's find out. I have no idea. But, uh, all the way up here, yeah, there's a big chest, and inside, it's a large quiver. Now we can carry even more arrows. Like, it's ridiculous the amount of arrows we can carry now. I think it's like 70 or so arrows, which is way more than we would ever need. Alright, so we're pretty much done in this area. Let's grab the ocarina and uh, teleport to the southern part of Hyrule. You know, like where Link's house is. And there's a couple of things that we can do over there and uh, get some easy pieces of heart. Um, there's going to be like one on the left side of this screen, one in the western woods, I believe. And then there's another one that we can get sort of near Hyrule Castle. And they're all like super easy. So first things first, let's grab our Pegasus boots and dash right into this tree. That way we can activate this Minish portal. And there is like a Minish house north of that portal. And inside I think you can fuse Kinstones with one of the Minish. But um, I don't think that particular fusion is anything too important. So I'm not going to bother with that. Anyways, yeah, if you swim up and all the way over here, there's a small little tiny Minish cave we can go inside. And well, check it out. Piece of heart just chilling there waiting to be collected. So that's pretty dang nice. All right, now that we got that, um, let's go all the way back and turn back into a human. Uh, sometimes I do wish there was a quicker way to change your size. Like, because whenever you travel a super long distance as a Minish, unless there is another portal at the end of your journey, you're going to have to make that same journey back. And it does get kinda cumbersome, not gonna lie. So I know it probably seems like we're spending a lot of time doing side quests, and yeah, there are a lot of side quests in this game, but as I said before, this game only has six temples, and we've completed three of them. So we're over halfway done with the game at this point in terms of like main story content, I guess you could say. Um, and I think that's why it seems like there's so many side quests, is just because in reality, it's not that there is a bunch of side quests, it's just that we're doing so many of them and the temples so quickly, it seems like there's an imbalance when there really isn't, if that makes any sense. 
Anyways, um, let's head inside this little tiny minish house, and I believe we can fuse kinstones with this gentleman, so... Yeah, there we go, that'll do the trick, and I think this is actually going to cause another beanstalk to appear... Yeah, right outside this dude's house, which is kind of funny. I like how in this scene, the, uh, moblin that is normally roaming this area is nowhere to be found. Hmm, where does he go? I have no idea, maybe he's just off screen somewhere, you know? Picking his nose or something. Oh no, there he is. Thankfully, the moblins with like the bows, yeah, they're like the worst moblins ever because you attack them and uh, it stuns them so they can't actually finish pulling back their arrow. It actually makes them super easy to kill. Like the ones with the swords are way harder. Anyways, up here we got ourselves a bunch of red rupees. I will take all of those, thank you very much. And I think, yeah, it's gonna max out our wallet and then. Oh, it's just a red kinstone piece. I thought that was something better. Well, you know what? Never mind. I guess that really wasn't worth it after all. I mean, we did have to come to this area anyways to get a piece of heart, so it's not too bad. Now that we're done, though, let's uh, make our way to northern Hyrule Field since there is a piece of heart that we can collect nearby. And also... We did sort of, uh, drain one of the fountains back at Hyrule Castle. I'm not sure if we can actually go there just yet, though. We might need to wait until, like, we finish the next temple in order to do that. But I suppose I can go and check because it'll only take, like, a second anyways. And hey, a green kinstone! Alright, yeah, just blow up those rocks, head over here to the right, and check it out. There's our piece of heart. So come to daddy. And there we go. And guess what? Yes, that does fill up another heart container. Hooray! We only have like, what, six left now? Not too many, guys. Not too many. Alright, um... You know what? Yeah, real quick, let's just go and do it. Uh, we'll go to Hyrule Castle and see if we can't get into where that fountain is. I do have a suspicion that a guard will probably still be blocking our way. Yeah, so... Doesn't look like we can get there just yet, but I think he does move after we finish the very next temple. Alright, um, I guess we're done here then. So, what do you say we warp over to Lake Hylia and start making our way towards the next temple? Like, we could go there right now, don't get me wrong, but there's a few things I would like to collect here in Lake Hylia first. And one of those is actually another piece of heart, like, there's so many pieces of heart that you can just, like, grab easily in this game. It's not even funny, man. But, um, I do want to swim back down towards the mayor's house, since there's a few things we can do over there. And jeez, can you stop shooting rocks at me, please? It's so annoying. Alright, um, let's head up here because I think, yeah, there's a ladder we can climb down and go into a cave system. And in here, if I'm not mistaken, we can actually find one of those mysterious walls to fuse kingstones with and spawn like another Goron. So I think we actually want to go to the right here, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty sure we can't reach those two golden chests yet, or at least from this area. So we might have to approach like the rest of this cave system from a different angle, but whatever. Anyways, yeah, right over here is the mysterious wall, so let's do a fusion with it, baby. There we go, sweet. I still think we need at least one more Goron. Yeah, we do. We need six total for them to break through this wall. I'm not really sure where, like, the last mysterious wall is, but like I said, we'll probably come across it soon enough. There is a chest that we can get, though, if we go there, but, um, there's really no point in going there until, like, this entire quest line is done with. Alright, so there they go, except, yeah, they're still not gonna be able to bust through that wall. They need one more Goron friend, and we'll get that to them soon enough. Now that we're done, um, there's a few other things that I want to do before we go to the entrance of the next temple, which, by the way, is, like, Right where we are. We're like 10 steps away from it, so don't worry about it. There's no crazy puzzle or anything that we need to go through to unlock it or open it up. We just have to walk to the entrance, essentially, and it's in this same area. Alright, so real quick, right over here, there is a shortcut we can make. So now that we push that boulder into place, yeah, we can teleport to the Windcrest and very easily come down here anytime we need to. 
So the next thing I want to do is uh, get rid of this Moblin first things first. And might as well kill the Chew too. But um, yeah, we can go inside this tree. And I believe this will take us to, well, another piece of heart. But also a dojo where we can learn a brand new technique. You have found the true master swordsman of Hyrule, Waveblade. If you train with me, I will teach you skills that will make you a master. So, would you like to train here? Uh, sure. Now you will learn a dangerous technique for desperate times. The Peril Beam. First, you must have only one heart left. Second, use the last ounce of your strength to swing your sword. That's all, young swordsman. Do you understand? Uh, sure. So, there is no turning back now. For one must feel the technique, not just hear about it. That's why I will now possess your body as so to demonstrate the technique. This is the wave blade possession technique of training. Watch this. <laughs> possession? Not again, why? Phew, now you must try yourself. When you have only one heart left, swing the sword with the last of your waning strength. Alright, so yeah, he depletes our health and there you go, that's all there is to it. Yes, fine work, you know the way. I will now give you this tiger scroll, blah de blah de blah. So, yeah, this technique is pretty weird, unlike in typical Zelda games where, you know, when you're at full HP, you can get a sword beam. No, this game is sort of the opposite, you have to be at 1 HP in order to use the sword beam, which makes it kind of pointless. Like, we'll probably never use it throughout, like, the rest of this game, because I see no reason to ever be that low on HP. Anyways, though, um, yeah, directly right up here, that's a Minish Portal, but it's also the entrance to the next temple, so I think that's where I'm going to end things off. If you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing, but once again, guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.